I'm Mike Hanawald, field agronomist for Bex Hybrids, and it's a wet day here in Northwest Ohio, but uh, we're looking at corn, it's growing pretty quick. We've got decent moisture in the ground, and especially some of this early planted corn with the heat we've been having has really taken off and grown well, and so it's time to start thinking about fungicide applications. Now, to try and predict your timing, um, you can, can look at the growth stages. So this corn is at V13, and we have four leaves to go. V17 is the last leaf before tassel. And so you look at um, basically one, um, to one to three days per leaf um, to emerge um, at these later stages of growth. And so we're looking at four to 12 days um, is kind of our window when we expect to see tassels start to emerge um, in this particular field um, of 107 day corn planted on April 30th. So uh, that's a good rule of thumb. Now, there's two approaches to fungicide decision making, especially in a year like this one, when corn prices are a little bit lower than what we'd like to see. So there's the proactive approach that a lot of farmers take because they've seen consistent returns on fungicide and they plan on just spraying every acre this year. And PFR data would support that on average, you will make money spraying a fungicide. Um, or there's the reactive approach, which is where you try and hit the fields that are gonna have the biggest return on that fungicide so that you're spending a little bit less money and less investment where you're less likely uh, to get a payback. That approach takes a little bit more work, it's a lot more time scouting, um, but that can be a valid approach as well. Um, so uh, starting off with the proactive approach, on average, the best time to apply fungicide is at R1. You can see those PFR results there on your screen um, where we've seen a, um, that average return of about $19 an acre. That does not include application cost, but most of us can get our fungicide applied for a little bit less than that. And so that gives you a little bit of profit on average. Um, basically, we're looking at a 70% chance of uh, re that return on investment on that, that fungicide. Now, um, when we look at that timing, we've seen that that R1, VT, that tassel emergence is, is um, the best. And that's really easy to identify when these tassels are going to start emerging. However, um, two years ago at our Ohio PFR site, we did a study specifically looking at the effect of fungicide on vomitoxin levels. And 2023, if you remember, was a year we saw significant vomitoxin in a lot of corn in Ohio. Um, and so what we saw there was, if you could be just a few days before, um, so you see there on your screen that V18 application, um, we were only five days prior to tassel emergence at that point. We saw a significant improvement in yield. We believe that helped to ease some stress in the plants and allow that and lengthen out that um, pollination period, which gave us a little bit more yield. But we also saw a slight reduction in vomitoxin levels in the fall. If we can avoid spraying a fungicide on white silks that are actively receptive to pollen, we can potentially reduce our um, vomitoxin levels. There's no guarantee, and there's no guarantee this year that we will have vomitoxin. It's too early to tell um, at this point. That's going to depend on what the weather's like from pollination and onward. However, those are some factors to consider if you're taking that proactive approach and you get the opportunity, it might make sense to be just a little bit early. Now, I know a question I expect to receive a lot this year is, uh, what do I do when I've got an inconsistent field of corn, uh, where we've got corn at different growth stages? Because of the cool, wet May that we had, we had a lot of inconsistent emergence or some low areas of the field that might, have, uh, might be behind due to some water stress. In that case, you, it, it can be a little bit of a tough call to make, but you want to go after the majority of the field and go after the higher productive areas of the field where that corn is healthier and has a better chance at full yield potential. That's what we want to base our timing on and make our decisions based on. All right, um, last thing of the proactive approach, and really this applies to any time you might apply fungicide, whether it's proactive or reactive, is add a product that contains boron. You can see there on your screen the list of foliar products that are PFR proven, and um, <clears throat> the common thread among almost all of those is, is boron. Now, if you're gonna take the more reactive approach, have a conversation with your seed dealer about the, the ratings of each hybrid. Different hybrids have um, a better natural tolerance to disease and have um, better or worse response uh, to a fungicide potential. And so, um, target your scouting based on the hybrid's response and target those hybrids that have a little bit weaker natural tolerances where you're more likely to see a payback. Next thing comes down to scouting. No, it may not be a lot of fun walking through cornfields that are tasseling and pollinating on hot July and August days. However, that can have a big payback of being able to time that application correctly in that reactive approach. And so um, looking at uh, the three main foliar diseases that we're after. So number one, northern corn leaf blight, gray leaf spot, and also tar spot that you see there on your screen. 
If you see any of those symptoms from two leaves below the ear and above, that's the threshold to pull the trigger uh, to spray for a fungicide. You wanna be spraying within a few days of reaching that, that threshold. So um, that's another consideration with that, that reactive approach is that scouting. The last disease that you see there on your screen is crown rot. Now, crown rot is an earlier season disease, but it can actually um, affect the late season health of the plant. And so here are two plants that I dug just a little bit ago from this field. And um, the plant here on your left <clears throat> is one that we pulled from an area that had some water stress and on the end rows, some compaction. And the one on the right was further out into the field. And you see that there's a sharper discoloration there, a darker brown of that crown rot starting to show up a little bit worse than what we had in the better drained area of the field. And so um, basically what this is doing is it's restricting the flow of water and nutrients. And so it can add some stress to the plant later on in the year and might cause some of these plants to die prematurely. If we apply a fungicide, even though we're applying to the leaves far away from this crown, that overall improvement of health to the plant can help to keep this plant alive a little bit longer and help to reduce some of the potential yield loss from some of those plants dying prematurely. So that's one more factor as you're out in your field, dig up some roots, slice that stalk open and look and see how healthy that crown is because that might help to sway your decision one way or another. Lastly, to wrap up on just some best practices overall with fungicides. When you're picking your particular product, there are quite a few products that are PFR proven, but look at products that have multiple modes of action. That's been the one consistent thread. Um, work with your supplier of what you can get at a reasonable price. And also um, you can use the Crop Protection Network if you simply Google that. Um, that's a great resource of university research that looks at um, the efficacy of different products against different diseases. So pick that product with multiple modes of action. Um, next is that the application method, whether you use a ground rig or a drone or an airplane, depend, matters less than the timing. So whatever method gets it done when you need it done, that's gonna be the best approach to use. Third is your time of day. If you have the opportunity to spray in the morning, we've seen about a two and a half bushel gain. However, I will say that the timing of getting it done when you need it done is gonna be more important than the specific time of day. And so the only way to get the acres covered is spray in the afternoon, by all means, spray in the afternoon. But if you have the option, try and target that uh, spraying for the morning. And then lastly is carrier rate. If you're using a ground rig, it's PFR proven to use 15 to 20 gallons of water. We've seen almost a three bushel gain um, by doing that. So um, just some, some best practices, uh, regardless of which, which approach you're taking. So whether you're taking a proactive approach or a reactive approach, hopefully there's, this information was valuable to help make that decision a little bit easier. If you have any questions as always about this or any other agronomic topic, feel free to reach out to myself or your local Bex representative and we'd be happy to help. Thank you.